Howdy adventurers, and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David, and today we are in one of the most famous Wild West towns of all time, Dodge City. We are here at the Boot Hill Museum to learn a little bit more about notorious outlaws and people such as Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp. Let's go check it out, partners. Dodge City is a legendary Old West town that sprung up in 1872. The site began as an old fort, but the commander wouldn't allow alcohol. So, an enterprising man decided to walk out about five miles and set up shop right there. The Fort Dodge Jail was built here to hold those who just couldn't behave. And behaving was not something the residents of Dodge City were big fans of. Springing up near the railroad tracks, Dodge was smack dab in the perfect spot for traders, travelers, merchants, and cowboys alike. Though of course being filled with so many colorful characters, and having no city law enforcement, it didn't take long for Dodge City to gain quite a reputation. At one point, it was even nicknamed the wickedest little city in the West. It was said a man in Dodge City was likely to be shot dead with his boots still on, and that phrase proved so true that they quickly needed a burial spot for all the bodies. Boot Hill Cemetery. But as Dodge City grew, it became a little more civilized. In the 1880s, Dodge City became a boom town thanks to huge cattle drives passing through their stockyards. Due to Kansas regulations over fears that cattle from Texas carried fleas that held a disease known as Texas fever, Dodge City became one of the only areas in the state for people transporting longhorns and cattle. So they quickly gained a new nickname, Queen of the Cowtown. This replica general store gives you an idea of what people could expect when they came in back then. All the different items for sale, along with some current ones for the more modern day consumer. You were able to come in and pick up anything you wanted. A little souvenir to take with you to remember your time in Dodge City. But even after becoming a little more respectable and cleaning up their act, it's the old legends of the gunfighters and the gamblers and the outlaws that really capture our imagination and make us still want to visit this amazing city to this day. And of course we had to stop by the saloon and have some genuine sarsaparilla. The saloon was very much the most popular place in town back in the Old West days. A great place to kick back, have some drinks, play a couple hands of cards, maybe enjoy a show or two. Just, uh, you know, make sure you don't get shot. As you'll see, they went through a lot of effort to gain countless different items from back in those days and display them here for you. A lot of them were in great shape, including this little beauty here, the Mystic Wheel of Fate and Fortune. For only a nickel, you could find out everything that lay in store for your future. Of course, 
at a price like that, I couldn't resist. Let's see what fate has waiting for me. According to this, the love your heart is craving will be yours within a year. Use your natural talent wisely, and it will win you a fair amount of riches. At the same time, a person you will meet in blue clothes and smiling face can make you perfectly happy, and when abroad, keep from women, or they will do you harm. So, I guess a year from now, when I'm with the love of my life and very rich, you can say you heard it here first. Who am I to argue with the great powers of fate? Cigars and cigarettes were, of course, very popular in the day, just as they are now. And honestly, the advertising and look of them hasn't changed all that much. This was another fun little coin machine, but uh, one a little more adult. And the classic barber shop, where one could come in and get a nice cut and shave. Make sure you're all clean before you're out there. This board was a collection of signatures compiled by a school teacher by the name of Nellie Sagru. She managed to get over 160 different signatures of individuals who helped found and pioneer Dodge City, including the namesake of the town, Colonel Richard I. Dodge. Most of the signatures she found on old records signing out prescriptions and things like that. Still a very cool collection. Uh, I don't know who to talk to about this, but apparently they're trying to rip off my style. That's totally my idea first. Let's we'll see what's going on. Bringing law and order to this wild west town was no easy feat. One of the largest collections at the museum was this very impressive display of firearms. They managed to showcase different guns that different types of people were likely to favor and have on them. Indeed, firearms were a large part of Dodge City history, and the basis for one of Wyatt Earp's first big actions. Wyatt divided the city with a deadline, and an ordinance was decreed that guns could not be worn or carried on the north side of the line. This helped keep the commercial and residential areas relatively quiet and safe, while the lawlessness stayed in the south with all the saloons and brothels. As a matter of fact, the term red light district was actually coined in Dodge City, as train operators would take the red colored lanterns from their train's cabooses with them when they would visit the south side looking for female companionship. But with the gun rule in place, anyone wearing one in the wrong part of town was immediately jailed. In no time, the Dodge City jail was packed. When it became too much for the mayor to handle, he reached out to a lawman working in a nearby city, Wyatt Earp. He offered Wyatt to become chief deputy marshal and offered a pay rate of $250 a month. At the time, this was an astronomical salary and Earp gladly accepted. The current marshal at the time, Larry Dager, was more than happy to have Wyatt's help. So many previous officers had been either killed or run out of town that the marshal was completely overwhelmed. Wyatt helped hire four assistant deputies, and the work began. As chief deputy marshal, Wyatt Earp was tasked with tracking down outlaws, and one such villain was famed train robber Dave Rudabaugh. Wyatt chased him all the way to Texas, which is where he ran into a man who sometimes played cards with the train robber, the famous gambler, Doc Holliday. The unlikely duo formed a friendship that would last for years. 
As time passed, Wyatt was eventually made the town marshal of Dodge City, and he quickly put in place strict laws to help finally bring the town to order. Not everything in Dodge City was outlaws and lawmen, though. Even with all the craziness around them, life continued here in this town just like everywhere else across the country. These were some old medicines and medical devices that were used in that day. I gotta say, I don't think that I would have been brave enough to trust the majority of all these bottles and medicines from back then. Who had any idea what was in the majority of them? And I'm willing to bet that uh, a large part of it was snake oil. The print shop was very important for getting out news to everyone in Dodge City. And considering where they were, they had a pretty good business and wanted posters going up around town. Gambling was by far one of the biggest hobbies that a lot of people in Dodge City had. This display would allow you to pick one of the games and it would teach you how they used to play it back in the old times. On top of that, they also had displays set up that kind of showed you the tools of the trade for gamblers back then, what it looked like. Kind of a far cry from Vegas, huh? But if you felt especially lucky, you could give it a shot and spin the wheel yourself. I was hoping for five. Surprisingly, music was a very big part of things in Dodge City, and the Dodge City Cowboy Band was so popular, they even played at an inauguration for the president. Undertakers were, of course, necessary in every city. However, Dodge City in particular kept these guys very, very busy. No story about the Wild Wild West is complete without a good set of boots. So, of course, we had the boot shop. This is where they were made and sold. The post office was an essential part of life, as it allowed you to communicate with all those far-off cities and family and business you may have in other places. Just like the bank was, of course, extremely important. But, uh, looks like there wasn't anybody working there today. Hopefully, they weren't off getting robbed or anything like that. This little exhibit was hilarious, and it literally just showed you how long it took for them to take a picture. So it challenged you to sit and stay still for the entire time. I guess that's one way to get the kids to calm down. Speaking of kids, there was a collection of toys from the day. A lot of these actually had a lot more detail than I thought they would. And I'm surprised that they've lasted this long. I didn't expect to see Hitler here, but this display of dolls happened to show different historical figures throughout the ages, just made in the same style as what they would have done back then. Life in the Old West was pretty difficult, but these people banded together and made it the best life that they possibly could. And of course, they did have some familiar comforts to help make it a little better, such as going to church. 
Though the building was not a soaring cathedral or anything more impressive than just a humble one-room place, I was very impressed with the different Bibles that they had on display, that it actually belonged to people, such as Wyatt Earp, and were very ornate and just gorgeous on the inside when you looked at them. This is where people would gather to come together as a community and help pray and get that little bit of inspiration to get through living in the wild, wild town that was Dodge City. I'm going to head into the Boot Hill Casino here and see if any of Doc Holliday's famous luck rubbed off on me. Then, I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. This is David for Admiral Voyages. Thanks for tagging along. We'll see you next week. Don't miss out on a wacky adventure through the most mysterious place we've been yet. The Abita Mystery House. Thank you.